Welcome back to the Ken Matthews Report. Uh, my pleasure to have a journalist from the Epic Times, Patricia Tolson joins us. And Patricia was just at a pretty big event just a few days ago in person, and she saw the entire Mike Flynn film. It's called Deliver the Truth, Whatever the Cost. Mike Flynn, of course, military, 33 years, and uh, not only in the Trump administration briefly, but in the Obama administration, a lot to do with intelligence and surveillance, and uh, he's a pretty pivotal player. So welcome to the show. I can't wait to hear your take on this, Patricia, because rarely do I not see the film before I talk about it, but it just opened up today. You can buy it uh, online and Amazon, and but you... Uh, you had a great article about it in the Epic Times, and you can see Patricia's work in the Epic Times. You know, my audience knows we hold them in very high esteem. So welcome to the show, and uh, be, be the eyes and ears for my audience. What are we learning about Lieutenant General Mike Flynn? Well, first of all, Ken, thank you so much for having me on. It's an honor to be speaking with you. Um, the event was on the 5th. Mm -hmm. And it was held at the community center in Venice, Florida. And it was a pretty sizable room. And by the time the movie began, it was a full house. There mm -hmm. was standing room only. And they were they were an enthusiastic and a very eclectic group. There were young and old, black and white, um, Trump t-shirts right a lot of people holding um little israeli flags uh -huh. um it was just it was just a, a very patriotic assemblage of people and it was interesting to hear during before i get into the nuts and bolts of what went on in the film mm -hmm. the film elicited very loud and very enthusiastic cheers at wow. specific points. Okay, I want and to know those standing points ovations. They were they were in a lot of gasps, a lot of people, and a lot of you know the O's. Where a lot of things are revealed in this movie that even I did not know ahead of mm -hmm. time, and that really surprised a lot of people to find out. Uh, one of the things that surprised a lot of the people. Uh, you heard a lot of uh, rumblings and a lot of lot of talking when it when it came out was that General Flynn is a Democrat. A lot of people were, oh, they did not know that, mm -hmm. <laughs> and here they are, uh, you know, thinking the whole time that he was a, uh, you know, tried and true Republican Trump supporter the whole way. Mm. And he was actually hired by Barack Obama, and a lot of them forgot about all of that. I think that's what well, makes. That I think that what makes it interesting, just to to mention that there is a mixed opinion about Michael Flynn, and this is why I'm eager to hear your take on this because, you know, a lot of things have happened to Trumpers and Trump, and you know what's happening with him now, and the not only in the news media but with the DOJ and the FBI, and. There are people that question where Flynn lands on certain things, and that's why I think this is such an important film, and hopefully it, it will shed light on this, because we have been betrayed. When I say we, I'm talking about Trump supporters. I, I'm still a Trump supporter. Um, we've been betrayed by so many people, you know, and I'm not saying that General Flynn did it. I'm just saying that a lot of people question everybody now. You know, if someone even meets with Trump, we're like, what is it all about? What's happening? You know? Well, it what's happening is rather like what um, the producer of the show. I also was uh, privileged to snag a few minutes with him prior to the uh, the viewing of the movie. His name is Scott Whipper. And anyone who's familiar with any action adventure uh, films that's usually his area the big ugly things like that oh um okay. and this was his very first documentary and i asked him what the difference was and he said with this it's like assembling a plane while you're flying it wow <laughs> so it was it was just 
the thing he wanted to bring out was, you know, the truth. That's that I asked. I said, so what do you want people to walk away with when they're finished seeing this? And he just said the truth. So he was very focused on on making sure that that happened. And what really struck me was completeness, the way they they didn't omit anything, even things that didn't quite flatter General Flynn. Mm -hmm. And mostly it was sim it came across as something similar to when Donald Trump went into the White House. Donald Trump was a businessman. He understood business. He understood finance. He understood making buildings. And, right. and General Flynn, he was a military man. That's what he and both of them were thrown into the world of politics. And both of them were green and both of them didn't understand what was surrounding them. They went in, you know, green and naive and they learned the hard way. One of the things in my interview with General Flynn was what experience in your life changed you as a person. Mm -hmm. And he said two things. One was when he has to in the military when he had to inform family members that their father or their husband had been killed. Mm -hmm. That was very, very difficult for him. And the other thing that was difficult for him was discovering and having to face the fact of the absolute level of corruption in his own government. Now, I that want was, to... That was shocking to him. I look at, and this is, this is my, again, you have a, a better grasp on this information because of your access to it. And um, so he was, he, I know he was the director of DIA, the Defense Intelligent Agency, which a lot of people don't even know exists. Um, and he, he did that for about two years under Barack Obama. Now, I heard this, this is the story, you know, there's all kinds of lore on the street about Trump and the different players and, you know, the election and Jan Six. There's all these stories out there. And and we're hungry to get to the truth like you have done and like the Epic Times done, does and others, because we know the mainstream media is not, you, they're not telling us the truth. I always had the impression that what he learned, what General Flynn learned during the, the Obama administration, which I despise, full disclosure, not a fan of what the eight years of Obamianism did to this country. Um, he learned some things that I think really frustrated him, confused him. And I think he he was starting to doubt the certain elements of his country because of what he saw and what he was ordered to do. This is my this is what I had always heard. And he wanted to jump in with Trump because he thought Trump would try to fix things. He thought Trump would out the dirt and, quote, drain the swamp. But I heard his initial souring on the country started under Obama. Is that accurate or is that just a myth? Oh, that is that is what he conveyed to me during the interview. Excellent. And okay. the, the reason why he was uh, released by Barack Obama is he did similar to what Donald Trump when, did when he went into the White House, wanted to drain the swamp mm. in the political realm. General Flynn was attempting to do the same thing in the military and in the military circles. He was seeing the corruption there and he was uncovering it and trying to do away with it. And the higher powers did not appreciate that. And this is why he was removed. This is why Barack Obama warned Donald Trump, this you got to stay away from this guy. is because he was a boat rocker and they did not want a boat rocker right. to be having any position of power in Washington. I mean, I think sometimes people forget that. That was uh, that was common knowledge. Mainstream media covered it. They even came out and said President Obama told President Trump on more than one occasion, watch out for this Flynn guy. And the minute Obama says, watch out for someone, I want to hire him. <laughs> well, I, I 
to try to make this easier to understand on uh, on what happened. Um, all right, Donald Trump won the presidential election on November 8th in 2016. On November 10th, that's when Obama warned President-elect Trump that um, he was he was not to be listened to. He's bad, bad character, bad actor. Stay away from him. And then, uh, huh. and then on the 18th, eight days later, Donald Trump announces that he's going to be his national secretary advisor. Wow! So he's like you. He it's like the moment <laughs> someone's criticizing him, it's like okay, I want you. Um, so then on December 29th, that's when the phone call with uh, Russian ambassador uh, Kislyak, yes, uh, Sergey Kislyak took place. And on the 17th of January, 2017, that's when the FBI decided to interview General Flynn about that phone call. And in that interview, according to the guilty plea that he filed later, he denied asking Kislyak to refrain from escalating the uh, situation over the sanctions that Obama had imposed. Mm -hmm. On February 13th, 2017, General Flynn retires. And in his statement, he said, unfortunately, because of the fast pace of events, I inadvertently briefed Vice President-elect and others with incomplete information regarding my phone calls. He did not say he directly addressed sanctions, though. That was That's key. Mm -hmm. uh, Flynn pleads guilty on December 2nd, 2017, and agrees to cooperate with the Mueller investigation, which is now starting to launch against Donald Trump oh my regarding goodness, the yes. Steele dossier. Russia Gate, yes. You see, are you starting to see the connections? Yeah, there, there is it's, a stacking. It's, a, it's fascinating. The mm -hmm. so what was what were they claiming? Just to review, and I need the review as well because it you know doesn't it seem like ten years ago, Patricia? Even though it was only four, oh gosh, it seems like forever ago. Doesn't I see? It seems to me that some. I went through puberty during this administration. <laughs> anyway, um, what was he? What? What were they charging him with? The 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 they were accusing him of um, interfering. He, uh, Donald Trump was not president yet. Okay, he was not officially it. in that position yet. So him discussing uh, sanctions with a foreign leader or ambassador is a no-no. Okay, got it. So, and, and like uh, two weeks ahead of time, basically? Correct. He had not, right. he was, it gets better. Um, uh, former FBI director James Comey Ugh. admitted Why did you have to say that it, he James? took advantage. I know, isn't that name fun mm. to say? Uh, he took advantage of the chaos in the early days of the Trump administration and sent another familiar name, Peter Strzok, oh boy. and another FBI agent to talk to General Flynn. It seems to be the same thing that happened to Donald Trump. The surprise meeting, no, you don't need a lawyer here. We're just going to talk. Yep. And then everything happens. On September 11th, 2019... Flynn's attorney, Sidney Powell, filed a 37-page motion to compel um, against the federal prosecutors. One of the most damning charges that she, she laid out in this uh, document was that the FBI, that the DOJ lawyer, guess who, Lisa Page, mm. that had been assigned by Andrew McCabe, literally altered Flynn's interview, which was drafted by none other than Peter Strzok. Oh. Uh, then there's the text exchange that is correlated around that same time. It's uh, February 10th, 2017. And they are discussing uh, his the transcript of his interview with the FBI. And uh, at 1802 on February 10th, 2017, um, 
Peter Strzok said, hey, I was considering what you said. Just drop off what you have. I will incorporate it tonight. He's talk They're talking about the edits that they are making to General Flynn's testimony. I gave my edits to Bill to put on your desk, Lisa said, but didn't have your edits in my office. I found them. And they're essentially discussing the edits that they're making to General Flynn's testimony. Now, why, and this may be a rhetorical question for some, but why, def definitely for people that work at the level you work at, at the Epic Times, and you're pursuing the truth, why would the media not want to share this? Why would the media not want to say, hey, our FBI just framed a United States military man and they framed a civilian and then a candidate and then a president. What? Why is no one, why did this just disappear? I guess the question is. I Is this a rhetorical question? Well, well, yeah, for some, but I, I, I still run into it. It is people. interesting. I still they run played into this, people. They ran the same play with Donald Trump once he was in office yes. with the, the Steele dossier. And they're still repeating it. You could still turn on MSNBC this morning and hear, well, you know, Russia helped Trump win anyway. And, you know, he's a, he's he's quid pro quo anyway. Then you have not to bring up something that's totally out of the bounds there. But you look at the fact that Joe Biden did actually do quid pro quo and brag about it and they don't cover it. So I'm praying that you know, people are going to see this movie, but is it in time? Is it too late or is it is it in time to learn anything? And well, that's one of the things General Flynn said. It's never too late for the truth to come out. Well, I agree with him on that. Um, then on January 14th, that's when General Flynn filed. Once that information was revealed that they had messed with his transcript, Mm -hmm. that's when he decided to withdraw his guilty plea. Got it. Okay. Now he wants to go and fight for himself. And then on the 7th of May, 2020, was when the DOJ dropped the charges. Wow. Mainstream media failed to put that part out, too. That the DOJ, the DOJ dropped, dropped the charges. Correct. And in fact, what they said, the government has determined pursuant to the principles of federal prosecution and based on the extensive review and careful consideration of the circumstances that um, General Flynn entered a guilty plea, which he has since sought to withdraw to a single count of making false statements. And the crime, however, requires a statement. Not, what they're saying here is even... They ambiguously discussed, uh, General Finn was saying, you know, don't escalate things. When these sanctions take place, just mm -hmm. don't escalate things. Um, you know, just, you know, keep keep calm. Um, we don't want to get things to where, you know, you can't pull it back. And even if he had directly discussed sanctions in that manner, the, gover the um, government determined that he was not saying do this or do that. He was not telling him specifically what to do and how to respond. He was just telling him to maintain calm. And in order for it to be a breach of protocol, mm -hmm. he would have had to have advised him specifically to do something. And he did not. So he was not even engaging in policy. He was engaging of in, hey, I'm the new guy. Let's right. uh, let's not put gas on fires. We're coming in. We're looking forward to working with you. I'm the new guy. And let's uh, let's just chill. And instead, you know, the man was framed and destroyed in the media as, you know, he was chopping at the bit six days before the inauguration of President Trump to implement foreign policy, which he did nothing of the sort. He was, that is correct. He was not directing anyone. He was not trying to form any kind of policy. He was just introducing himself to a man that he was going to be dealing with regularly 
and advising that everybody take a deep breath and step back and calm down. That's all he was doing. He was not telling him specifically what to do, when to do it. So and, uh, the government eventually decided that he did not break any laws. And every even, even news... Chuck Grassley afterwards yep. said the same thing. And Bill Barr even agreed that he had done nothing wrong. It's like the phone call that Donald Trump had that he ended up being impeached over. He didn't do anything wrong. And same thing with the transcript. Um, we had someone in, oh gosh, his name is escaping me right now, um, revised the, tra or uh, created a different transcript. And this and, is for uh, Trump or for Flynn? For, it's the same thing that happened with Trump with the phone oh, yeah. call that he had. Oh, they always you know, tweak they, it. They, they create something that did not exist. And then they go after them for something that did not occur. And they do that a and lot uh, by paraphrasing Trump. Trump can't say anything on the campaign trail, uh, whether it's one right. word yes. or something where they're not saying, you know, he says Nazis are fine people. No, he didn't. You know, it's just it's like childish almost. But what bothers me is everything you're telling me is discoverable to major news platforms, including social media. And it's either still banned or not talked about and never been rectified. I mean, that's the biggest thing I think that we're heading into in this coming election, that these people make up these lies. They make mistakes. Sometimes they're honest mistakes. And then they just keep them alive because it helps their their side like there's people that probably haven't even heard this yet which you just shared with us and all of this comes out during during the movie and uh, there were gasps like oh my god and people were just stunned that they never heard about any of this and that's one of the things that scott whipper said when we were talking he said see media has had 10 years to get this right, to figure this out, to do their research and to tell the truth. And yep. they have not. And this is why they're doing this movie now. So he's a, you, you believe uh, he's a truth seeker. Now, I don't know if this is something he revealed or not. Is he a Trump supporter? Is Does he lean conservative? Uh, not, he did not say one way or the other. It's interesting because I'm finding more and more people coming out of that realm, the entertainment or Hollywood or documentarian realm, that truly are uh, non-political. They're just sh so shocked by the level of lies that they feel they have to engage in. And I mean, what what the, what's happening now to Flynn and Trump and from the left, it's actually driving people that have a conscience to engage and they're ending up on the right team. They may not even have liked Trump. They may not even be conservative, but they're like, I can't believe this is happening in my country. How long are we going to keep saying Russia, Russia, Russia? Well, as a journalist, when I go to events or when I'm covering a story, my, my position is to remain objective. And as I'm watching this film and I'm hearing these revelations, it was on my part, I'm amazed at how little journalism was actually taking place mm. around this story. It it was it was all mat it was sound bites. That's what uh, Scott Whipper referred to it as it was sound bites um that the legacy media was writing regarding this story. It was uh, General Flynn resigns, General Flynn in, indicted, General Flynn, it, but they they leave out the part, the transcript was edited, the DOJ dropped the charges, mm. and General Flynn received a complete pardon from Donald Trump. And, and on one top of, the of that, that came out, I'm sorry, hmm. uh, but on top of that, as you said, even what he did in actuality, was not wrong at all. And even Democrats have admitted that. So it was just Correct. insult, injury, insult, injury, insult, injury. 
the reason why, so, but he pled guilty. He pled guilty uh, for the same reason that a lot of January 6 prisoners and, uh, and other people that the government goes after is they are losing everything. They're losing their home. They are losing everything that they have built. And then, because that wasn't working, they decided to go after his son. They hit him in his weak spot. And they didn't even really come out and say what they were going to go after his son for. But that's when General Flynn yelled uncle. That's that's when he backed off. And that's when he caved and um, gave them what they wanted. But then during the Mueller investigation, which he, you know, agreed to help them with that, mm -hmm. that was another thing that frustrated them is he would not turn on Donald Trump. He would not uh, not turn on him, would not lie would not say what they wanted him to say mm -hmm. so he was essentially doing exactly you know what he did and uh was the cause for losing his job under barack obama he he would not lie wow and this is the pattern that we're seeing right now with the 72 year old you know grandmother who's facing two hundred thousand dollars and uh, a year in prison for spending 10 minutes walking around the Capitol nonviolently talking to a cop and praying on the outside. And praying. They 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 pull these people aside. And it's interesting because I'm sure you're familiar with Sidney Powell's book. It was brilliant when she talks about how this is the technique of big government. Big gov the, the government comes in and they say, you're guilty of this. And you say, no, I'm not. And then they say, well, if we say you are, you're going to have to prove you're not. You're going to lose your house. You're going to lose everything. Right. You're going to lose your reputation. So why don't you just plead guilty to this? And they beat you and beat you and beat you. And I think so few people know that 95% of government cases never go to a jury because they scare the living hell out of people. If you go to a jury, you'll be in prison for 100 years. But I didn't do anything. Yeah, but you'll have to prove it. That's our government. The only thing that uh, well, General Flynn uh, said that what helped him get through a lot, where he found a lot of uh, strength, is family, of course. Mm -hmm. The letters that he said he received upwards of 100,000 letters from wow. Americans all across the country explaining to them him how they felt about what was happening to him and also sharing their own stories and their own opinions that they had very very big concerns and doubts about their government and this i think was another reason why he expressed it it's time it's it's time to come out with the truth about this story and that's as a journalist what i what I really find fascinating about this story is how much legacy media and how much how much was omitted in the telling of this story. And this movie, this documentary, brings all of that out and lays it out all on the table. And they do it in such a way to where it becomes so crystal clear mm -hmm. that it is a pattern that is government against whoever they decide it's the same they they run the same play over and over and over again and i forget i sorry i forget the name of sydney powell's book but it was one of her first books and i remember having her on the show and we were discussing it and she used similar uh phrasing that it's the same play over and over the government comes in they have you know 35 lawyers they have 42 witnesses none of which you've ever heard of and we have someone willing to testify. Well, who are they? Well, we can't say. <laughs> and the interesting thing about Lisa Page being the one that was editing the transcript is she wasn't even present during the interview. Oh, my goodness. She, she had no standing in being the one who's editing this transcript. And for people who... Adam Schiff, that's the name I couldn't remember. Yes, I call him Adam Schiff for brains. I hope you don't mind me calling him that. But you look at the the agent struck and stroke or struck, stroke and page, um, uh, whatever. 
they were not only having an affair, but those were the same two. These are the same two people, the ones that were railroading Flynn. They were the same two people that were all giggly and excited about helping to destroy Trump's chances with insurance, insurance policy. policy. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and yet, where's Lester Holt on this? Where's the Today Show? Where's Good Morning America? Where's CNN? Where where are they, Patricia? Lee, when it's it's difficult to know whether they know they're providing false information or if they're just providing information that they hope is true or whether or not they really believe it. It's difficult. But then once they realize it's not, rather than retracting it or correcting it, they drop it and just move on to something else. That's to me, that's the scariest part. This is where as and I've I've never called myself a journalist, but I've always been a member of the media, analyst, talk show host, etc. And I think I'm a citizen journalist now because people like yourself and I probably read more than most academics. I, I run into more people that are on panels and they've never read the Constitution and they're on a panel about the Constitution. I think the media let us down. I think we needed the media so much over the last five to 10 years. We needed the media to shed a light on everything that's going on, every major issue. I want to know the truth about Trump, whether it's it's uncomfortable or not, the truth about Biden. And the media just became so hateful and biased that they openly just said, we're not on your team anymore. We hate MAGA. We hate Trump. We're not big fans of America. And there's nothing you can do about it. And I, I think Flynn got caught in that wrath. This is what is so exciting and such an honor about working with the Epic Times, working for a company, a news organization that actually tells the truth. Yes. That digs down and finds the truth. And no matter who is uncomfortable in the telling, they bring it out. And that it, it's it's. I, I wake up and go to sleep every day and every night with a very clear conscience. Well, God bless you. That and I work for such a company. The people over there, I, and you know, before we started, and, and my audience knows this, even from when I was filling in for Rush, I remember bringing in Epic Times articles and we would sit down with the producer. And I remember when it when Epic Times first launched, I, I told you I was like one of the first, like the first week I subscribed to it. And I remember going to the production meetings, either at Rush or my own syndicated show, and saying, okay, here's what we're going to do, this story here. And they're like, what is this? Epoch Times? Epic? What is this? I said, these people are telling the truth. Well, what about the New York Times? It's a piece of garbage. Put it in the litter box. <laughs> and, and, that's, and people know that. That's the one good thing I think we could say that is happening. I think... Uh, well, what do you think? Do you think the public is waking up and understanding, you know, I don't I don't know if I can trust NPR anymore on the Flynn story. I do believe America is waking up. They're becoming more awake than woke, which is a refreshing sign. Mm -hmm. And my editor. Um, it's been a pleasure working under his guidance he taught me that journalists are history tellers. Hmm. Keep your opinion out of it. <laughs> when you're telling a story, tell the story. Let the reader decide how they feel about it. And that's what this movie will do for you. They that is lay it out. Yeah, that regardless. Is and they and you walk away going, wow. There's so much I could tell you, but I can't. I want people to go see the film, but they will. Well, yeah, I don't want you to. I don't want you to ruin any ruin any spoiler spoiler stuff. I think they're getting it though, and and uh, as I mentioned before, we we launch or I wouldn't say launch because we're not a big enough platform yet, but we promote so many books and films and documentaries, and uh, my platform has been very much, you know going deep 
on the election stuff, on the vaccine stuff. And you'll notice that Epic Times, you guys, along with some other ones out there, uh, Gateway, Revolver, and a few others, you guys are just one of literally a handful of sources that have been covering these huge stories fact factually, like the border. No one even covers the border. We're being invaded. At least Epic Times knows by definition it's an invasion. So I want to, can I ask you a couple, I know you're, you've got to go because you're very famous and busy. Um, <laughs> and you look lovely today, by the way. Um, yes, sir. Do you think Mike Flynn is going to be the vice president pick? Just your opinion. I don't have one. I'm a journalist. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, do you think he's going to run? Do you think he? Do you think he's going to be a competitor of Donald Trump's at any point this year? This is. A I can see I him about. being involved. I can see him being involved somehow in. Trump's administration. Where that will be, oh, I, so I don't see, know. You still see him as an ally of Trump? I see him as an ally of the truth. And as long okay. as he's working for someone who is whose goal is the same as his, right? the political position is irrelevant to him. It's what is the truth? Well, I mean, ideally, that is the that could be like the best guy to have in the fight. A military veteran. Mm -hmm. I was reading somewhere, and I don't know if this is accurate or not. Uh, does he have four bronze stars? Is that that I do not know? <laughs> I just, I, I just because he's been in the Iraq War, he's been in Grenada, he's been in uh, Afghanistan. Anyway, he just he has such a wonderful resume, and I, I was heartbroken to see a, a man who who seems to have great character and a wonderful resume just be thrown out by the media no one in the news recall media. the headlines recall the headlines when they were horrible uh, it, he was always referred to as the disgraced general the, the word disgrace that was like his first name instead of general it was disgraced general it was like his rank it was it was brutal what he went through and the and the media continues to do that, and that's what that's what makes Epic uh, unique. They don't do that. They don't say uh, conspiracy theorist, congressperson, you know, right. insurrectionist, protester. They just right. it, we, it's, you won't see gotcha headlines. You, the, yeah, the clickbait headlines. We 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 stay away from that. And like I said, it it's a it's a great honor to work with. Uh, a news organization that has such a high bar. Yes, they do. And that if you if you would do me that favor because and pass it along that I am such a I'm such an Epic Times fanboy. And I'm not just trying to get like a free what? hat or something. A free subscription would be cool, but that's OK. I know that you, you've got a, a staff that you have to pay, but that that's one of those things. I have turned that on to so many different people. Uh, People are like, what is that Epic Times thing you're talking about? And once you, when you read the Epic Times, and then you, when you read the 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 bilge from the Washington Post and the New York Times, and everybody in mainstream news media, not everybody, but most, as you know, they still use those rags to prep. Like, what is the New York Times saying today about General Flynn? Like, who cares? They're they're probably lying. They got us into the Iraq War. One uh, thing that people can do, uh, they could go to, they could Google my name, Patricia Tolson, yep. Epic Times, and they could subscribe to receive in their inbox the, the truth every day. Very good. Very good. And don't forget, and I, and I was going to mention this and I completely forgot, you don't have your last name up on your... Uh, up on no up i don't and uh so but we've we've mentioned it plenty of times and i'm going to put a big headline thing when i when i upload this but i just want to thank you again for being on is there there anything else what uh 
that you want to mention about the movie without giving anything away? I mean, was there anything that you didn't know about uh, General Flynn that you were shocked that you just learned? Yes. What's that? I'm not telling you. I have to go see the film. What a team. You will be, you will. You will have to see the film. You will well, I could, you will be surprised. Your reaction was so genuine there. You, it was almost like Christmassy. Yes, there was. And I'm not telling you. Okay. So, and you can get it on Amazon. Just Google, just Google the movie, the film, uh, Flynn, Deliver the Truth, Whatever the Cost. Um, and check out Patricia Tolson uh, at Epic Times. And I hope you're going to come back. And- we should we should tell people the way we met is I was reading Patricia Tolson's stuff. And remember, I reached out to you and said, right. Oh my gosh, a truth teller. <laughs> You're telling and then I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's Ken Matthews. <laughs> Ken Matthews. There's someone that wants to someone else wants to tell the truth with us. It's going to be exciting. This is so funny because this this is the most exciting thing about podcasting and this new wave of truth telling it's we're just gonna we're just gonna go right around the mainstream news media we're just gonna skip msnbc you know so google it's patricia told it. well have a wonderful week and uh we'll have you, you on too. again when something big breaks i'm gonna uh order it well, actually i think i already did order it it'll be here in the next 24 hours and i'll watch it and i'll send you a review at no charge okay Thank you again. God Thank bless you, so Patricia. Much. Take care. Likewise. Thank